good day friends it is me mike Harmon, or hl mod tech and i'm back today to show you how to create a profile in cura 3.6 for your GEE tech a10 printer check it out so the first step is to download cura 3.6 which you can see i already have done i use this for all kinds of printers but right now we are going to add a new printer when you click add new, notice it is built for the Ultimakers, but we are going to do a custom FFF printer. I'm going to simply name mine A10, and I'm going to name it A10A because I've already got a profile and I don't want to delete that one. When it loads, one of the first things you should change is the filament size. Let's make that 1.75. And then our build area is 240, 240. And I have seen in the EasyPrint 3D software that the height is 260 and it does have a heated bed. We are using Marlin. I'm going to leave all these numbers alone and I am going to hit finish. For the next part of the project, I'm going to take you quick to Tinkercad. I recommend signing in with social providers and then simply hitting create new design. And we are doing this because I recommend printing with a cube and let me show you why. Bring out a cube. It is currently 20 on a side. I want you to change it to 10 on a side. If you just click the little white box, it lets you adjust it. And it lets you adjust it on all three dimensions. Super easy. I'm going to name it my cube. And this is how I test my printers. Once you've got that done, you simply need to export the STL so that you can use it in your projects. I've got a special folder called 3D Modeling. And I'm going to put my cube in there. With that piece built, let's go back to Cura and bring it in the printer. So there's my open file. Once again, there's my 3D modeling. There is my cube, and it shows up in the center of my printer. Now, a lot of people tell you they want to print with a cylinder. I have no problem with printing cylinders. I just like to do the cube first uh, so that I'm more likely to be successful, and then I can dial the printer in from there. I also like to move my A10 to the front corner for the first print just because I have a hard time seeing under the printer to tell if I'm really getting the right amount of adhering. I also like to keep this print really fast so I'm going to show you how to scale it so that it's not as thick. I'm going to shut off uniform scaling and I want to make it 20 on the X. I'm going to keep 10 on the Y but I'm only going to make it 3 millimeters thick. As I roll my scroll wheel in and take a look at this, you can see that is a quick little project so that I'll be able to test this corner of the bed. And when I'm happy with that, I'll start moving it around the other parts of the bed. I am going to switch to a 0.3 layer height. That's a great place for starting out. I'm going to make it 10% infilled. And then I'm going to switch to the custom mode and show you what we can see there. Right now, there are very few items available to us, but you can get to the pieces you need by simply hitting the little arrow, and it shows you what was there. The first one I want to double check is my point three, and it is there for the quality. You can bring them back up if you want. My shell is going to be 0.8 millimeters for the wall thickness. I have a 0.4 nozzle on this, so that means there's two nozzle widths, which is great. Infill we already looked at. We chose 10. You can do other grids and all that. Right now I'm going to stay with the typical grid. Material, I want my printing temperature to be 210. I want my bed tin or my build plate to be 50. And I'm using this from the actual dog that got sent with us. And I found that if I use 55 or 60, which I use for my Ender 3, quite often my part is still pretty bendable right after printing. I'm going to close that one. Let's slide down real quick and check the speed. I'm going to leave it at 60. I want to go down to build plate adhesion. And I want to, instead of use a brim, I want to use a skirt. If you can't see these settings, let me show you how you get them. Uh, click that gear, type the word skirt, and it will show you all the possible skirt settings. And I care about the line count, distance, and the minimum length. So then I can change it to 5. I've got a distance of 10 away and a brim of 250 so I can see what it looks like. Let's back up to cooling quick. And I like to make sure that the minimum layer time is 10 seconds. 
That way when I'm making smaller parts, I've got a better chance of those being successful as well. And those are all the settings I need to test my print. I'm printing with an SD card and you can see I just inserted it. So now I'm gonna save to the removable drive. You'll notice it's named as MyCube and let's go over and let's actually run it on the printer. Right, so we're gonna run this off SD. You can see I already had the printer running. And this is one of the things that I do find frustrating about the SD. If I do print from SD with the printer already running, it doesn't show up and there's no option to refresh it. So my only choice is to hit the little reset button and if I had preheated my A10, it's gone. But now, when I go back in and go down to SD, I can find my little cube and I can get it started on printing. Real bummer where there's no place in firmware that you can adjust that. You can see that it does heat up really, really quick. And then we will see a finished print in just a few minutes. While I'm letting it heat up, let me just tell you one other thing that's just kind of tough with this uh, setup. You really cannot see the print head when it's getting ready to print. So you can see I raised the Z, but you really need to make sure you don't have any filament caught on there because uh, that can ruin a print and it's just so almost impossible to tell when it starts printing. All right, so there you see, friends, that is the start of a failed print. And that is why we do that brim so that we can tell uh, just how well the print is starting. So here you can see it is homing, moving in for that first print. And now it's going to do those lines so that we can tell what kind of adhering we're getting. That's pretty good smush, so I'm thinking this is going to be successful. This is where if you see that it's not correct, you should raise or lower your bed. I printed this little fella so that I can tell if I move the little dials to the left, it raises the bed because sometimes when I was on the fly, I would make the mistake and mess that up. You can also see here, one of my little fixes, this is a piece of screen for a window with a couple magnets, and that way none of these little threads of plastic fall into the uh, printer part. Simple, quick, effective, and as you can see, our print is well on its way. So you can see, friends, our little cube did print good on the left corner. I printed the little dinosaur on the left corner too. Um, I've got to fine tune this if I do it well. He is bendable. Uh, right now he is not, but that's a little bit because I might have had it too snug and these sides actually fused together. But then a lot of times also if I wiggle I can break them free. Hopefully this gets you started so you're successfully printing with Kira. There's a lot of room and a lot of settings you can adjust to get it just the way you want. Uh, you know, I'm printing extra fast. You may want to print yours uh, more detailed, and those are the settings you adjust. But at least this way, you've got Kira and you're ready to go. So friends, if you found this movie useful, please hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please hit subscribe. If you want to leave a question or a comment, I will happily try and help you get your printer working the way you want. And if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new movie from me, HL Mod Tech, hit that notification bell. Have a great day, friends.